thank you, Lord. There's none like you. Blessed, blessed, blessed be your holy name. We thank you. Ooh. You sit in the heavens and make the heads your fools to you. Who is like unto you, Lord? We thank you. Blessed, blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Let's give Jesus himself a big hand. And you may this be So I'm just going to uh, continue from where I stopped today. See where God leads us tonight. Is there anyone here who came trusting God for healing of any kind? Don't be shy, please raise your hand. Okay. Awesome. So there's going to be two categories of healing. There will be the one that will take place through the hearing of faith. Um, that is, as you hear the word, you just know that the sickness is, and you don't share compatibility anymore. All right? And then you can excuse it out yourself. Is that okay? But <laughs> before I start praying for the sick, let me just tell you something about healing. Uh, healing is something that once you pass it in your direction, you grab it. Don't wait and say, let me just be checking if the food stops are there. Grab it now. Is that okay? Are you with me? Are you sure? Good. Is there anybody here with any case related to? short limbs. If you will not be shy, just wave your hand so I can see. Okay, we have one. Another person. Two. We have one leg shorter than the other. All right. Okay, it's not, that's not your case, right? There was a matter, there was one that we had. Somebody came with a short leg. We over-ministered to the leg. Then the shortest leg became the longest. So we had to now say, oh yeah, just you to come out too. That's how practical these things are. Is that okay? It is unfortunate how that um, in the world of intellectuals, when everybody doubts the healing, healing is, and, and that's why notable miracles that can't be denied needs to happen. I like it when there's somebody everybody knows in the environment that this is the problem. God takes that person out. Kind. I was ministering in a war. So I was part of the medical team uh, for the rugged, rural rugged. So a guy came who had certain symptoms, not to mention the symptoms. It's very funny symptom. Okay? So the drug for that was no longer available. They called me and said, Stop this guy, there's nothing we can do. So I said, anyways, we can take those antibiotics or so and so on days. 
what Jesus can give you now. So which one do you prefer? They write you the drugs so Jesus heals you say now, now, now. So lay the hands on him. What you couldn't do before is that you could not urinate without crying. You have an idea now. So go ahead and urinate, my friend. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Do you feel like, no, drink plenty of water? Come on, urinate. So the guy went to urinate. And right there in the toilet he was screaming, Ah, I'm oh, sure. thank you, Lord. <laughs> For the first time, he was urinating without stress. I did not know that that was actually the son of the chief imam of that village. Because the moment he got his healing, I was now that you are healed, come to Jesus now, quickly, quickly. Got him born again and baptized in the Holy Ghost immediately. Let's seal this thing. Don't come back tomorrow. Let's do it now. <laughs> All right. There's a boy here. I won't mention your name. You didn't come for the world. You came after a girl. You are like Saul of Tarsus. You have come into your calling. Because this same thing I'm doing, by this time next year, you'll be doing it. <laughs> Let's pretend like the boy is not here. Is that okay? So, the man, the chief imam, got angry. You know, I know where you get the son of a chief imam born again. Got angry. So what nonsense? He entered the son's room, heard him praying in Jesus' name. Stormed the crusade. Was at the back, looking at me. I, I didn't even know him. I was ministering. Um, that particular environment, the, the people, the locals, they speak Iberia, so we have many of them there. So, I was speaking in English. The interpreter was interpreting in the language. I don't know the language, but I know whenever he makes mistakes. So, I correct him. At some point, I just prayed tongues in the middle of the ministration. But I did not know that each time I was praying in tongues, I was actually speaking in Iberia. So the man, every time I divert him, I just uh, says the hodge. That was when he was getting his own message. That you better give your life to Christ here so you don't die early. That was what he was hearing. So by the time I call out, I call, the chief imam was in front. So, of course, quickly led him to Christ and baptizing the Holy Ghost. Sharp, sharp. He was wearing the turban. You will speak in tongues with it. The walking of miracles, the supernatural makes our walk faster. Hmm? The moment we remove the supernatural from this ministry, we become lecturers. <laughs> we just begin to lecture. Amen. So I was showing you um, Second Kings chapter number two. Am I correct? Hmm? All right, from verse one. Second yeah. Kings chapter number two. From verse one. So I've read a few, so I'm just going to jump. To verse 6. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on, and fifty men of the sons of the prophet went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and it divided it and thither. And they too went over the island. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I'm taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing, 
Nevertheless, if thou see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be unto thee. But if, <laughs> but if not, it shall not be so. He's clearing the guy. If not, you are followed for nothing. There's no difference between you and the other sons of the prophet. <laughs> are you with me? Verse 11. And it came to pass as they went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Read the first statement in verse 12. And Elisha saw it. One more time. And Elisha again. Elisha saw it. You will see it. Uh, they are not saying amen well enough. You will see it. And he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took his own clothes and rent in two pieces. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. And he went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Let me just um, say this. Hmm? There's nothing God is doing on the earth that is new. Everything that God is doing is a continuation of what started before. One generation shall serve him and command him to another. So all the graces, all the mantles, all that is needed to function, they are somewhere on earth. So the kingdom functions by the principle of transference. I mean, how did I begin to walk in healings? God called my attention to the works of our robot. I'd sit down, watch them and cry. I'd watch healing school by Pastor Chris Kilome and we. Then God introduced me to Charles and Francis Hunter. Dangerous guys. Husband and wife terror. One time they said the wife had diabetes. He laid hands on her and said, Receive new pancreas. Such dangerous guys. If you uh, believe you have a calling in the healing direction, um, those are people you should really want to look after. In fact, I remember watching one, um, not healing, it was a crusade by Pastor Chris. We were on campus then. And there was this boy that was brought. They had this room where they kept people with critical cases. <laughs> there was this boy whose leg, he had never walked since he was born. The legs were so twisted. When I was going to pray for that boy, I was pitying him in advance. Pastor Chris, we love you already. God has done so much to you. Just forget this guy. There's nothing here. This guy can't walk. That's what I was saying. I was watching the meeting. He didn't even lay hands on the boy. Just use his leg to tap the boy's leg, did like this. Use the other leg to tap the boy's leg, did like this. He came here, shook his own leg. Don't, don't touch the boy. Did not even lay hands on the boy. Just shook the leg and just say, get up. He didn't look back. The boy got up. Ha! One day, so the disciples were moving in the middle of the night to the other side. And there was a great wind. And they were all afraid. Then they saw Jesus walking on water. And the Bible said they were distressed and said, this is a ghost. And Jesus said, no, it is I. Then Peter said, Lord, if it is you, bid me to... One of the ways you know those that will function well in their generation is that they will always request to come. They will not be satisfied as spectators. If people like that should be in this kind of meeting, they will go back home and cry. 
after this order also. Is there anybody who will say, Lord, use me too? Yeah, maybe they see they are not much. They are quite... Hey, is there anyone here who will say, Lord, bid me to come? Is there anyone here who doesn't want to be ordinary? There's this lie that um, once you're a lady, your assignments will end in the kitchen because um, God doesn't really do much with women. Now lie. The narratives are changing. We are having a new generation of vibrant, dangerous, and terrific women arising. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Say loud and clear, Lord, bid me to come. Lord, bid me to come. That sounds like Jewish English. Let's speak your Niger English. And Zimbabwean English, Kenyan English. <laughs> Maybe say it again, Lord, bid me to come. I want to do the impossible. I want to see the invisible. I want to do the impossible. I want to see the invisible. Lord, bid me to come. If there's anything you will observe about Elisha, it was dangerous pursuit for what he wanted. You must know what you want. And you must know that it doesn't fall on your laps. You run after it. You go for it. I were on campus, they used to call me Pastor Marathon because all those with me, you have to fast drive. Vigil almost every day. Kai back home by my mother. And we still finish top of our class. So don't think that I'm going to get people and waste their time. No, 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 no. Finish top. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> because there's no point deceiving yourself and say God is using you and you waste your parents' money. You could you are scapashing when you should be studying. No, you must get the balance. So that it will not look like Christians are nuisance. But by the time we are done praying, we are still the ones that will teach them what they are not understanding. They will respect us. True or not true? The days that people will perceive the calling and go and bond their certificate is over. Now we are wearing coat of many colors. Any door that opens first, we enter with certificate, with syringe, with enter. The rest is history. We will flip Jesus out in a strange way. Now we will that it will flip the other coin and say, We are actually undercovers. We might be on jeans, but there's nothing normal about us. So the anointing is to be pursued. You 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 hear stories. It's it's there's no man of God you will hear, or you will see that he's doing any amazing thing that doesn't have a reference to being imparted by another person. These things can be given. And I love the illustration he gave. That impartation is calling someone to join me. When I say receive, I'm saying, come stand where I stand. It might take you years of fasting to dig yourself. But the impartation is less short in the journey. Though you will have to pass the test that come. Are you with me? That's impartation. And that's why the moment you notice an impartation, start watering it with fasting and prayer. Are you with me now? Something is going to come upon you today. I'm struggling to teach, you know, but because I want to establish. So if I'm able to successfully teach, but this thing sometimes is like um, trapping the gas, it just explodes. So. I have not remember the story of Pastor here at the boy when he spoke about his um, encounter with Kenneth again. When several ministers went to see again. And um, everybody asked for what they wanted. And it took care, actually. They were sincere. And when he again came to him and asked, ah, you, you have been quiet. What do you want? And he said, I want everything that makes you, you. So Aiken said, go on your knees. 
Let the rest excuse us. And he said, he again laid hands on him and he passed out. By the time he woke up, Kenneth again was by the side praying in tongues. You know, I was speaking with a father in the body of Christ, a bishop, I don't want to mention his name, and he shared his story with me that when he clocked 59, he went to meet Daddy Joe, that's Pastor here, they were to pray for him, for his birthday as his son. <laughs> and I said, ah, my small boy is now a big boy. He said, uh, once you clock 60, come back. That's when I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> he didn't pray for him. At 60, come back. So he went the following year, happy that now I'm 60. <laughs> but, ah, my small boy is now a man. He said, go on your knees. He said, you know what I'm going to pray for you? Because you are just about to start ministry. This is a bishop. If I mentioned his name, you'd be shocked. Ah, I learned so much from this story. And <laughs> he said, Baba laid hands on him. You know what happened to him? He said it was like somebody dragged him and he began to see the kind of crowd he has never seen before. White, black, everywhere all over the world. And what God was saying is, a new work is starting at 60. He said he was there in that state for over an hour. By the time he woke up, he met Baba standing over his head in tongues. Without that impartation, he would think he has done so much. Impartation is always a summon to come up higher. So the man said to me, he said, while we were younger, Archbishop with Benson, that also had two calls close, did this to us. He said, I don't know what is it about you, Femi, but the same way Archbishop took us, God has asked me to draw your hands. So he said, go on your knees. Ah. I don't want to go into some things. So you must always desire impartations. Jesus even warned them. He said, don't, don't go out and start making noise and preaching. Wait to be endued with power. Power is important. Wait for it. Go and tarry in Jerusalem now. You must desire it. You must hunger for it. You must run after it. You must look towards it. You must, it must be obsession. It must be the reason why you are awake at night. Use me to fill me with power and Follow me. You must. Because if impartation meets a man who doesn't have hunger, it won't land. I've, been, I've, gone, I've gone to places that I couldn't do much. You know why? They have no expectation. They don't want much. Sometimes I'm shaking my head. They're like, we are blessed. We are, thank you for coming. They give an oil. I tell my we just dump it somewhere. Not interested. Just want the people who are hungry for God. Those who want to see more of Him. Is there anyone here saying, Lord, more, 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 more in our own lifetime? More. We want to see more. The stories of power must not end with the fathers. Is there a desire in the room? Is there anyone who is hungry in the room? Lift your hands to God and say, Lord, more. Me too. 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 Me too, Lord. I am 
don't want to be ordinary um, I want your presence I want this fresh oil I want to walk in the supernatural I want to walk with you I want to walk in the miraculous I want to know you more reveal yourself to me let the wave of your glory blow over my heart Reveal yourself to me, Lord. I don't want the fire of revival to go down in my lifetime. Use me! Use me. Empower me to pay the price. Empower me to pay the price of consecration. The price in fastings. The price in prayers. The price in seeking your face. Oh God, empower me empower me set me on fire I don't want to be ordinary particularly those who have serious hunger before now whenever you see the sick your heart burns and just want to draw them out of wheelchair you see yourself in meetings with crowds nations, that's the calling back on him it is today this is the day you receive that grace lift your hands and say Lord Make it happen. Fill me with power. Content for it. Content for it. Take a minute out. Communicate your hunger. Communicate your burdens. So don't, don't, don't be protocol about this. Don't be protocol about this. Don't be protocol about this. Don't be protocol. Ask for it. 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 For some of you, prophecies has been hanging over your head, waiting for these days and this time. This is the beginning of the fulfillment of the prophecies that has gone ahead of you. This is the beginning of the manifestations of that which the Lord says he will do. I can feel a man take a feeling. Supla is every day cases. Just help her. Come. This is the beginning of the fulfillment. Let's take out the other side. Of that which the Lord showed you. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Lift your hands to God. This is the season. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Just, just take her to the side, help her. Be, be seated for a while. Um, for the next 15, 20 minutes, um, it's going to be teachings, but it's going to be pointed in the sense that. Um, um, because we don't have much time, so um, any grace that, that looks like yours, the moment I talk in that direction, is going to find the rightful owners, all right? So it's going to be a blend of teachings and impartations. Are you with me? Are you sure? Say, Lord, today is my day. 
Come on, say it again loud and clear. Say it again like you mean it. Today is my day. You know, when we were seeking God and praying on the campus, the devil did everything to convince us that we're wasting time. Just, just reduce a bit. Reduce a bit. Yeah, just a bit. Did everything to convince us that we're wasting time. How did I got into the prophetic? It was 20... 2013 I had separated myself for three days dry just to seek the face of the Lord just waiting and crying to God tired so I slept I slept where I was praying then I had a vision <laughs> and I saw myself where I was praying with the same clothes everything the same thing and I was singing a song the lion of Judah just a song around that and I, I just at the back it was an Anglican church where I used to pray I was at the back 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 so in case people come to the front, they will not see me. I will not, they will not distract me. And I saw what looks like a, a lion the size of a cat. A small one. Was walking towards me. But I just noticed that the majesty was her, much. So, but I noticed that as this lion got closer, I got bigger. By the time that white lion was so much hair and majesty, was standing in front of me, it was taller than the horse big and there was an awe I saw in that vision that in the vision I ran away so I woke up then I discovered that the same hall that I saw in that vision was in that room so physically too I ran away oh yes I can't even share many encounters because Media, this one that the Jews said he can't teach. Everyone going to copy. I'm trying to just sit among those who are mature. While I was running away physically, I just saw like a hand tap me and say, "Look." I, nobody was behind me, and as I looked, somebody opened the scroll. I was reading the scroll. Then it was like the scroll drew me inside, and I was seeing the things to come. That's why I, I, I can sit down here. And when God gives me open vision, I'm here. And I'm not here. It's the prophetic. By the time I, I thought all those things that happened was within five minutes. By the time I woke up, I saw that the brethren had surrounded me and I was on the bed. And they said, you passed out. Eh? Hey? Say we carried you in the compound of the church. Me pass out. I was seeing things. Whether with my eyes closed or my eyes open, from that moment I see things. There's always that day that you get the invitation extended to you. There's always that day. Today's that day that somebody will enter a deeper dimension. you will because i'm particular there are there are seers those who see that's their ordination they don't shut them down they should see because as they are calling let their eyes be opened oh lord don't, don't bother saying amen remove the veil and let them stand in their auditation. Male or female here, those who are seeing prophets. At the count of three, let their eyes be open. One, two, three. See now. No more blindness. No more. No more. 
sometimes we, we are, they, listen, the devil is playing a fast one on us because we are becoming paranoid. We are shutting down dimensions as opposed to be for our benefit because of fear of getting it wrong. Some people look weird because say, I see this. Have you read any book of Rejoiner before? And are you aware that 90% of those things are visions? What? I was standing there looking at many things in the world of psychics, all those stuff. Stargazers and all those things. There is the authentic prophetic. God told me he's going to erase an army of prophets. Who will not be afraid to stand in the ordination? And that's why you must get discipled so that the fire you are carrying will not burn you. Oh, yes. Without discipleship, you can be blinded by your own light. Are you seeing that now? Pride can enter as you start seeing things that your pastor is not seeing. You say, hey, hey, don't mind them. What, what, what have they seen that I have not seen? If there's anything about this thing, it, it works by contention. Let me, let me show you a scripture and so I can link you with why God is doing what he's doing. Jude, verse 3. things that used to happen in my meetings is that as people are going through journeys I can pick their journey um, while I'm ministering because there's somebody here, uh, it looks like while you are seated, you are sitting in front of what looks like the, band, um, the bank of a river, uh, it's trying to sweep You're, you are running, you are not sure, am I, am I seeing well uh, am I sure, I'm, it's like you are being drawn in and out, in and out, in and out where's that person? Time! Now you get deeper. No more fear of, am I, is it my mind? Is it not my mind? Is it? Because that's one of the plagues of the prophetic. The devil will tell you, it's not anything. It's your mind. But is it? That's how you grow and mature. It lures you in. You see it. Jacob saw a ladder reaching down from heaven to the earth with the angels ascending and descending. He saw it. Elisha saw Elijah. When he saw him, the nomenclature changed. My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horseman. It was a lonely mission Elijah had. He saw how can a man be the chariot and the horse. He saw it. All right. All right, which I gave diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saint. You should earnestly. So the, the reason why God is doing what he's doing is because it's a contention. There is something that has been handed over from generations to generation in the days of Woodward Eta um, to other generations that came after and other generations that came after. God is preparing you for the baton. And it must not die in your hands. It must not die in our hands. We must raise... Look, look, look at it. The, the world is closing on the church through intimidation, trying to shut you down. You hear them on Twitter, on, on Instagram. You see their cancel culture. You must contend for the faith. And that's why he's imparting you. He's raising a combatant generation. We are sent for the days of war. The days ahead are dark. We are the only hope. We are the light of the world. A city that is set upon the hill that can be hidden. You have a role to play. You have a part to play. The days of wearing bikini and taking pictures during some summer is over. It's time to clothe yourself with garment of fire and get on the street and preach. 
the days of taking pictures for the gram and show the heaps and all that it's over we are either ready for the walk ahead or we are grounded we cannot have few and one of the, many amongst those few are just living for themselves we must wake up it is an awakening it's not empowering you for fun it is a responsibility he's not joking with you the days of living for yourself is over I live here tonight I preach in church tomorrow morning I still have vigil tomorrow I have five hours prayer in the morning after one hour prayer I have another one hour prayer in the night I have five hour prayer on Tuesday in the morning one hour prayer on Tuesday morning Bible study in the evening one hour prayer in the night there's no rest the anointing confers on us responsibilities I'm not saying that to look high you have to be ready for what is coming we can't have an army of babies little children who are easy mark for imposters we can't have an army of babies we can't have an army of children Ephesians 1 verse 14. Can you give me a message translation? Ephesians 1 verse 14. Uh, okay, let me, let me check if I'm really correct as touching the verse. If you're there, say amen. Are you sure? Oh, sorry. Ephesians chapter number 4, sorry. That we... Thank you. 4 verse 14 now. From now on, be no more children. Those to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive I, I love the way the message translation puts it do they have message huh? okay it's there okay no prolonged infancies amongst us tell your neighbor no prolonged infancies amongst us you've been a baby for too long hey tell your neighbor you've been a baby for too long it's time to grow up and mature no prolonged infancies amongst us please we will not tolerate babes in the wood. Small children. What an easy mark for imposters. When the battle gets fierce, a child is not an asset. A child is a liability. You have to fight for your life. You have to try to rescue the child. And that's why we have to grow. That's why he's doing what he's doing. That's why we are laboring. Just like yesterday, Maurice Erulo was in Dunamis. I was praying for Dr. Paul and Neche. And he knew that he was done. He knew. How many years down the line now? Gone. And we, we, we watch them one by one. They are dropping the button and leaving. Is there a generation contending? You may go on social media and be excited with your keypad and insult them. Poke at their doctrines. Drag them. I've, I've, I've never seen it this bad. You see a 24-year-old boy call her the boy is stupid. And a girl will see him and say, I like him like that. The rate of depreciation is fast. So fast. You wonder, we are, we are here now this is where it is. You are amazed. I've seen people go to church and their pastor correct them in church and will go on Twitter to drag their pastors. It was not like that while we were growing. There was discipleship. People sit down in church now when you say what they like. But the day you tell them that a sinner, if he dies in his sin, is going to hell. You say, hey, nonsense. You say, I don't believe in all those pastors. They have developed each in years, wanting teachers that will comfort them in their lies and in their evil ways. And what is happening? 
the next generation of ministers are seeing the council culture and they are afraid and that's why god has raised some of us to enter into that darkness drag us you see us standing and be encouraged to stand join us if you care they say hey family house you are a bastard correct do you have more is that all you've got are you sure we go back and say the same thing again there is the spirit of boldness and audacity he has not given us the spirit of bondage to be afraid but of power of love and of a sound mind whenever you see us being dragged don't pity us understand that it is a cup you will also drink in unless you say no to the gospel if they hated jesus they will hate us much more but it doesn't stop what we are doing we must be empowered beyond our emotions the days ahead are not smiling we need combatant believers, not churchgoers. Revival is not when we have those seeking miracles. It's when we have those seeking Jesus. We are not here because we want a healing, though we want a healing. But we are here because we want to see the healer. That's revival. And that's what he's doing. That's the purpose of the impartation. That's what he's doing. Sometimes I look at this generation and I ask myself, if the best is reserved for the last, uh, Lord, I speak as a man. Uh, my, my generation, something is wrong. I read of men like Lester Sombral. I'm, I'm seeing what is happening now. Uh, are you sure you can trust us with this? I'm asking questions. Are you sure you want to trust us with this? I look at people like Katie Kuhlman. One of our meetings was described so much so that she was so called up in glory. There was a practical lightning that struck through the meeting. And this is my generation. Are you sure? Are you sure you are the, we are the ones that they wrote about in Joel chapter number 2? Or oh, it's a lie. Can you project that scripture, Joel 2? Oh Lord, help me. Um, give King James translation. You know, sometimes maybe people will see us travel different places and feel, oh, I just want to be there. Like, like it's, it's fun. Really? <laughs> Blow the trumpet. Can you give me King James, please? And sound the alarm on my holy mountains. Can you give King James quickly? Uh, why will we wait for them? Let me read from here. Okay. Let the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Yes. Quickly. A day of darkness, a day of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. They had not been ever the like. That's talking about the end time, mammies. Neither shall be any more after it even to the years of many generations. A fire devoured before them and behind them a flame burned. The land is as the garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and, of us, and as us men, so they shall run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountain shall they leap like the noise of flame of fire that devoured the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face we shall be much pained, all face are gathered blackness. Um, this, this, this looks like... Can I have like five guys, quickly? This one stand here, just face that side. Everybody behind each other, thank you. Um, space. Give space, enough space. So, thank you. So let, let's, let's say, um, this is the generation of the Babalolas. Okay? Ran with the batting, and when time came, hand over to the next generation. Um, 
let's say you have the likes of um, Bias Jelton, and then Ron the Race, and then and over to the next generation, you have the likes of the Idausas, Ron the Race, and hand over to the next generation. Um, then you have the likes of the Oye Depos, and then Ron the Race, and hand over to the next generation. Then you have the likes of the Pastor Pojo Imade, Poleneche, and, and can I have one more? Pastor, please join me. And then run the race and then hand over to another generation. And we are somewhere on this queue. And look at the caliber of men that has been described. And you wonder, in a relay race, you put your best team at the end. This is so much trust. If we have the ones at the end, are you saying you trust us more than Babalola? This was my cry. Then the Lord said to me, son, you are not seeing well. He said, this is what is happening. Now everybody turn back. Face that side now. When it gets to him, you have the combination of all graces. Come, 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 come. Standing with one man and say you are not running this race alone. You may look like the last man, but you are a combination of graces. We are not alone. The task must, might be great, but the power behind us is greater. We are not alone. You contend for the mantles. Contend. Contend for it. Contend for it. Contend. It may be dark. It may be what it is, but contend for it. It used to be ordinary. Refuse. So that this generation is not wanting in grace. If you belong to that generation, lift your hands and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Fill me. Fill me with power. Fill me with power. Fill me with power. I, I want to receive. Now, what, what happened in the morning was that um, we spoke about the anointing upon your life and the manifestation of that anointing. But what is going to happen this evening is not the anointing. Now it is mantles. So, I'm saying it ahead. It's going to get to a point where you can't stand it. But it's going to come strong. Mantles don't die. Sometimes they are hanging around for the rightful owners. Who will carry the mantle of Idaosa? Who will carry the mantle of Woodward Eta? Who will carry the mantle of the John Hagees? Who will? So there are people here who are heirs to the throne, heirs to the mantles. Lift your hands where you stand. Say, Lord, here I am. Now, look at this. It doesn't matter how eager an athlete is in a relay race. You are not a legal runner until this is handed over to you. Is that okay now? What happens is, God calls for meetings. And that's why it is not every ministry that God gives meetings. No, it's not. It's not because you have a church, you must have a meeting. No, it's not every ministry. Hey, what God does with meetings in territories is to have like a classroom where there's distribution. So you find out that you notice there are several men across all over the world, but they are all tracing their heritage to meetings. You hear men talk about the Kinetic meeting in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He calls, it's a convocation. Hey. That becomes a distribution point. You must know where the river of your own generation is flowing from. You must. Somehow God makes sure it is not far from you. Somehow. You must know where the river is. There are meetings I go for. Some people counsel me and say, hey, now people want to rush you when you go for this meeting. Just sit down. What do you do? I have to go because something is flowing there. I have to. And this is one of such meetings. Something is 
flowing here. Something is flowing. Something is flowing. So what you are getting tonight is that you are entering into a flow. Some graces have done some works ahead of you and you are the continuation of the project and you will find out what project. So lift your hands, everyone. Elijah caught it. Elisha caught it. And he shouted with a loud shout, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Pastor here at Debo is already 82. Bishop Edepo will be 70 this year. Daddy Kumi is 83. Who are the generations contending for it? Who are the generations saying, Me too, me too, me too? Ah, my Father, my God, I ask that across board in this meeting, let distinctive mantles rest. And the people will know what they are stepping into. At the count of three, from my right to the left and the back, let it find expression on the rightful owners. One, two, three. Touch! Let it sit. Distinctive graces. That's why I said it's going to be very heavy on them, so... Those who are called in music field, your own mantles. Those who are called to speak and teach the church, your own mantles. Church leaders! Your mantles. Do you mind I pray with you? Let the hand of the Lord find expression upon these lives. Grace. 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 My friend, God has been showing you and you know what he's been showing you. Let that hand rest upon you. Let it rest. Let it rest. Grace. Touch him, sweet Holy Spirit. Grace. Woo! You must know what you are stepping into, beloved. You must know. You will know. You will know. It comes with a knowing. It comes with a knowing. There are those who are called after the order of Deborah. And there arose a Deborah, a mother in Israel, a prophetess. The grace for multifaceted dimensions. The Esthers. They exist. They are yours for the taking. You will know it and you will see it. You will know what you are caught up for. There are Daniels. We must step in the palace. And Joseph's. There is the Bezaliels who are called in all manner of workmanship and craftsmen. Anointed to know what the Lord is doing next. And there are sons of Issachar, men who understand times and seasons. Those who can discern where we are going next and what we must do next. By the Spirit. Prophetic forecast. Prophetic sight. Those who know it, they know it. That's your place. You will know it. You will know it. Help her. You will know it. You will know where you belong and you will know where you should stand. And some of you have cried over time, Lord, why me? Why me? Why me? So much rest on your shoulders. And you must see it. You must step in. With audacity and boldness. Forget about the pains of the past and step into your calling. For the set time is here. You must see it. You must see it. You must see it. You must know after what order and whose order you are called. The works are all requires definite knowledge. Definite knowledge. You must see it. You must see it. All of you on this line, join your hands together. All of you on this line, join your hands together. From the first person to the last, I use you as point of contact. 
let a wave of that glory flow across these hands touch them and you will drink into it and you will know where you are called you will know what you are called into you will wait and you will not feel good I kafrade kiss the finish Rain the the finish Rai kafranish the bus the finish Sene kredi shada bai kafrade the bus Rai na makate se finish the finish Be still and know that I'm the Lord says the Lord You'll see One of the things mantles does is that it reconfigures men. All of a sudden, the ones who have been shy, who have been timid, becomes bold. Bold and wild. To do what they've been called to do. Boldness. The spirit of boldness and audacity. You stepping audaciously in your place. It is on you. And no one can stop it. It is on you. Over hela mai kafene shele. Se ke plaha fande ke blende o siklate. Mente ke profene ki se vlenishte. Se ke fende rogo shete rogo se. Hey, Shane Roaster. All of you here, join your hands together. All of you here. Oh, yes. And lift it up while you join it together. I want ushers, let me stand behind them. When this thing wears you, you are no longer normal. You become another man. Even you can't explain. You, you don't understand what's going on. You become another man. When it wears you, and that's what is happening. A garment is being worn on you right now. Touch them, sweet Holy Spirit. Touch. Touch them. Touch. Touch them. Touch them. Touch them. It is. You are being clothed with it. You are being clothed with it. I, I, I called it the other time and I prayed for you. Listen, come. You must stand in that place. Huh? You must nurture and mature the grace to teach. You must speak it forth. Is that okay? Sit with the word and get yourself trained in understanding and communication of the word effectively. Because a sound will come from you that will go to the ends of the earth. But you must labor. Hmm? You must labor. You must labor. There's something flowing, but you must labor. So you can contend for it. Is that okay now? From today you will begin to see what you've not been seen before in scriptures. Let the grace rest upon you. That your eyes are opened. You must contend for it my friend. You must contend for it. You must contend for it. It will be said that these are men who turn the world upside down. It will be said. In a mass, several levels. Aye, aye, aye. Amen. Amen. Functioning by the anointing is very powerful. Hey, just a bit. But you must know when your operation now is because a mantle has won you over. You will know 
whose journey you are extending you will know it will change your entire configuration it will change your appetite it will alter your life it will it does always and usually when this one comes what happens is the things you have been struggling to enter that, that thing it comes with it just notice now i can fast three days and not even feel it the eagerness the body to pray more you've prayed a man can be implicated into praying i go for meetings people serve me food and those who serve who can't eat for three weeks because, hey fasting is ready there are dimensions for all these things and you can step in we are going to begin to have seasons where we are gathered for Sunday service and from worship God comes to the protocol of his own service hey and we've had it several times that the keyboard is nobody can stay on the altar because the Lord is here the Lord is here Amen. I, I see I see people don't worry. I see people becoming you know um I, I've not seen it here, but we have it in Nigeria. Can you hear me at the back? There's this network uh, mast. Huh? Your MTN mast, all those stuff. There's this network mast that you, you see. And when the mast is there, people around that place can use that network. There are people who are masts of the presence. Hmm? Mast. They will tower high in territories. And there are possibilities in those territories because they are there. Hey, it's a grace. You can't contend for it. People who carry the presence effortlessly and when, when they move the, the, the cloud of witnesses packing after them. Packing after them. You carry it. Are you with me? That's, that's, that's what is placing on your life. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Let me pray this last prayer, then pray for the sick and get testimonies. Lift your hands, everyone. The grace to carry and communicate the presence effectively. So the way this is going to be is like, it's going to practically look like somebody is covering you with a duvet. You just notice a new layer, a new, a new layer. It's something. Lift your hands where you stand. The gift of the presence. Find seven people and pour it on them. I count now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Help them, help them, help them, help them, help them. It's locked in, it's locked in, it's still moving. It's locked in, locked in, seven, locked in, locked in, locked in. Two at the back, locked in, locked in, locked in. Touch! It is different. It is different. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. Everyone who came here with one form of ailment or the other, please your hands there right now. Growth, lumps, cysts, palpitations, asthma, diabetes. Anything that has a name. Don't worry, don't be distracted. Um, 
short-sightedness, blurry visions, whatever it is, color blindness, sickle cell, whatever it is. Now, look up everyone quickly. Let me tell you a very quick one. I'm going to cause the root of that sickness to dry. Okay? It's going to happen. If there's any growth, it will melt under your hands. You'll see it practically. you see it. Every sickness in the body stays there with a symptom. Are you with me? How do you know you have been healed? The symptoms representing it there will what? Vanish. You just notice. I couldn't do much stressful thing without what's happening. Things have changed. So, just help those people. I want you to grab your healing now, except you like it. Is that okay? Place your hand on that area that you trust God for healing now, 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 now. Close your eyes. And I want you to see that sickness gone. See it gone. See you living your life without it. See it gone. Quickly. See it gone. That's, that's the strings. It's not all right. No way. See it gone. Okay? No, you can continue. See it gone. All eyes closed. I stretch my hands towards you right now. And I take authority over the spirit of infirmities. I take authority over the spirit of infirmities. I command. You foul spirits tormenting their bodies. Get out now. I plead the blood of Jesus. I cause the root of every ailment. And I command everything that the Lord has not planted. Get out! Breast lumps, get out. Glaucoma, get out. Skin reactions, get out. Blurry visions, be healed. Everything representing pain, backache, stomachache, ulcer pain, get out! And the ones I have not mentioned, as long as you are here, I take authority over you now. And I command, be healed. It is done. Uh -huh. Let these short legs begin to grow back. Short hands begin to grow back. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. It is done. Now, before you clap, in the next 30 seconds, check your body. Do the things you could not do before. Is that okay? Check your body. The moment you see, if you have to run around to quickly check, ah, this thing has left. The moment you see it, be standing outside. All right, so I'm going to wait the next one minute. You know what the rest of us will do? Let's keep giving Jesus a big hand. He's the healer. Now, hold on. While they are clapping, oh, listen. Listen. Hold on. I am very, very passionate about healings. Because nobody deserves living in distress. Nobody should live in pain for the rest of their life. So I don't even know what symptoms this is. The moment you confirm the healing, whilst they are clapping, be on your way out now. Let's give Jesus a big hand. For the next one minute, and we see and hear just a few testimonies before I run. Check yourself. Once you see it, run out. Oh, yes. Don't stop clapping. Um, can, let me get out the mic so she can confirm what the Lord has done. Don't stop clapping. Don't stop clapping. The moment you can, you can confirm your healing. No, don't kneel down. You can stand. You can stand. Please stand. Please stand. Once you confirm your healing, come out quickly. Check, 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 check. Yeah, God is doing much more. Don't stop clapping. Oh, we bless you, Lord. 20 more seconds. Check yourself. Check yourself. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Is that the best you can clap?
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, while we wait, there's this sound on my spirit. See what the Lord has done. All right, can we raise that sound? Um, do you know the song? Yes, done. Yes, raise it. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Thank you, Lord. See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come, has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Can you see what the Lord has done for us? See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what, see what the Lord has done, what we've waited for, has come to pass. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Now, whilst they are here, and um, you can confirm your healing, I know some people have to go check. Um, um, make sure you run out and don't keep it to yourself. Amen. Let's hear what the Lord has done. Yes. Yes, sir. She had been having a pain in her back for about 12 years now, sir. Ah, uh ah. -uh. 12 years. And now the pain is gone, sir. Huh? Okay, give her the mic. By what? Um, 12 years ago in December. What was this noise? Can you help me with the noise? 2012, precisely. Yes. I, had, uh, I was involved in a car crash. Car crash. So, yes. So, yeah, so um, I had an impact in my back. Wow. Yeah, such that and I for, can't... So that you couldn't what? When, when I have this pain, I can't stand. Wow. No seat. Wow. And for 12 years, you have carried this burden. Yes, yeah, the pain comes and goes. It comes and goes. And, and how do you know you are healed? I have this conviction that I'm healed. And you can't feel the pain? No. Not at all? I'm healed. What couldn't you do before? I can't lie down on my abdomen wow. for a long time. And now you see that the pain is gone. Yes. It's perfected. Let's give Jesus a big hand. It's perfected. It will never return. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. It's done. She's had a back pain that's lasted for a year. Uh -uh. By the instance of prayers, she's now fine. All the pains are you gone. You can't feel the pain again. Come. It's perfected. It's perfected. There's, there's somebody here who couldn't breathe properly through the nose, like you use a combination of your nose and your mouth. You've been healed. I'd like to see that person particularly. Thank you, Lord. It's done. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Apostle, sir, she had a lump in her neck, hey. and she said she finds it difficult to move her neck at all. And during the course of the prayers, she found out that she could move her neck from one side to another. The pain is completely gone, sir. Okay. Yeah, you can celebrate Jesus more. The lump, it's inside. Yeah. So, um, so, at first, it started because of, apparently they said that because the mattress was bad, and then um, it became a thing where I couldn't move my neck at all. How many years? Um, it started last year. So I couldn't move my neck at all. And I had to actually get like a cyst to kind of hold my neck upright so that it doesn't stay that way. And then um, it went for a bit. And then it started to return again where um, when it happened. So the pain comes from the neck. And then I have like serious migraine as well that comes with it. And now you can see it again. You can move. You, you couldn't do this before. Wow. Thank you, Lord. It is perfected. 
Your healing is perfected. It's done. Let's give Jesus a big hand. Yes. What else the Lord? I think there's a lady there also. Yes. I had sickle cell. And yes. I was sick recently. So my body was aching. And my leg, I came with my leg aching. And it's not aching again. That you came, that you, you know what that means. Yes. God told me. I'm saying this for the first time ever. He said, I'm giving you a grace for sickle cell. That's what God told me. He said, stop praying that the genotype changes. He said, what I want you to do is to tell the person, you are not permitted to have crisis again. Live normal. Okay? So, hey, what is your name? Ochua. Huh? Ochua. Ochua. Are you from Nigeria? Yes. Where in Nigeria? Edo State. Edo State. All right. You are witnessing the hand of that yeah. crisis. Mm -hmm. All right. So the pain did not leave to return. It left forever. Yeah. It's never coming back. Father, I thank you. And I stand on that covenant you've given to me. You are exempted from sickness. Amen. And you live your full life Amen. the way you should. Amen. When next I see you, it will be amazing testimonies. Amen. It is done. Somebody came here with a very haunting thought of death. And that thing has been lifted off your neck right now. Where's, if you will not be shy, where is that person? Haunting, it's been haunting your mind. Thought of death, thought of death heavily. Who is that person? Come, my friend, come. Don't be shy, come. Thank you, Lord. Let's give Jesus a big hand. Same as you. Hey, come. Since when has that thought been coming? Since last year. And you? Huh? Where your mom? 2021, that's three years now. Okay. It's settled. Satan, take your hands off our mind. Go! And never return. I rebuke that spirit. Lose your grip over her right now. Go. Sit and take your hands off him. It is too late to take him. You're sealed. Same thing here. The hand of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus. That spirit is never returning. Gone forever. Oh, let me take this testimony then I bless the people. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, where's Pastor Ritage? Our testimony. Apostle said she has, uh, she's been having ulcer pain since COVID. And now the symptoms, she came with the symptoms with the, with the pain, the stomach pain, and it's gone now, sir. Wow. Since COVID. That's four years plus. Yeah, okay. The doctors won't? The doctors test and they can't find anything. But it literally feels like there's a hole in my stomach. It used to feel like that, but the pain is gone. Wow. Come. There's somebody else here also who has anxiety disorder. Uh, you won't be shy. You know, I'm very careful when it comes to conditions. Um, can you be here with me? If you won't be shy, come. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Bless your holy name, Jesus. What's your name? Tuluwa It's gone. It's gone. I know why it's gone. Because Jesus is the healer. Thank you, Lord. It's gone. Don't worry. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. It's gone forever. Is it the one or you? Him, okay. Same here. All right, same here, same here. Um, okay, same also, join the line there. Thank you, Lord. UTI, urinary tract infection. 
has been healed. UTI has been healed. Thank you, Lord. Um, Father, I ask that your hand will scan through this front and let the spirit of anxiety um, scream out now and um, lose them. Let, let it go. Now, if, uh, yeah, yeah, search from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. I command that strange voice, that spirit, lose her now. Lose him now and let him go. In the name of Jesus. Lose him and let him go. Lose her now. Go! Lose her now. Get out now! Get out. Get out. Never return. You will not. Sudden fear. Panic. Get out. You will heal completely. A few of repetition. Go! Never return. I charge that spirit now. Get out now and be healed. Gone. Never return. In the name of Jesus. Is there anyone else? I command anxiety. Um, be gone. Be gone. There's somebody seated here who is everywhere you turn, you are indebted. Everywhere. Every, turn right, left, everywhere you are indebted. Everywhere you turn. It may look like a sensitive one to come out for. Um, thank you, Lord. I charge that spirit. Get out of her now. Go. You will not be timid. You will not be anxious. Anxiety. Disorder. Go! And never return. Oh, yes. Come, bring her. Bring her. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, Pastor Itich, I was going to pray for her the other time about what? So it's the one we're calling. Oh, yes, take her up. I take authority over every recurring, recurring ailment. Lose her and let her go now. Take your hands off her. Go! Now! Never return. Everything, you are set free, discharged and acquitted. Never to know those pains again. Set free completely. Now, if somebody has been healed from UTI, uh, you will not be shy. Sometimes people... But I'll just move on. Indebtedness. It might look quite sensitive. All eyes closed. Just stand where you are. Let me pray. And then... Jesus I join my faith with you. You come out of that complicated network of refundings. You come out. When next I see you that broken into a new dimension of wealth, owing nobody. Let the next one year bring you the results you have never seen before. <laughs> Touch it, Lord. We end the grip of it. And you come out by the Spirit. Come. Help is sent from above, and everywhere you turn, help. There's a person here who is about to pause your study because you can't tell what is happening. You just notice you are finding difficult to cope, to comprehend. Where's that person? Wave your hand. Let me see you quickly, quickly. You're about to pause your study. Hey, you are here. So I will come now. Come. You come out of that. Help is administered. Eh? Help. The gift of man. You will know what it means for God to help a person. Is that okay now? Everywhere you turn, you see that help. In the name of Jesus. 
Everywhere you turn, the same thing. Everywhere you turn. What you couldn't do for years, for months, will be done effortlessly in a day by the Spirit of God. Effortlessly. Help. Help. Speaks for you. And where is that lady? Do you mind? ministered to you from above by the hand of the Lord. It is open to you to do it effortlessly. You will not be afraid. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. Is it the same thing? Huh? Okay. Come. Uh, what about you? Okay, you are an usher? Okay. Place your own hand on your head. It opens. In the name of Jesus. Hey. Touch him, sweet Holy Spirit. Put your own hand on your head. It opens. You will not be discouraged. You will not be discouraged. You will not be discouraged. Thank you, Father. Bless your holy name. drop the mic and leave I think this might be one of the most crucial one now um, I'm still a condition and I, I just want to beg um, if you will not be shy I will ask that all eyes be closed what I'm seeing like somebody's room womb is decaying from inside your womb is rupturing. Are you the one? Hey, rejoice while coming because you are getting a brand new one. Thank you, Father. It, it doesn't reveal for nothing. It reveals to redeem. Okay? Only him could have revealed this. Lift your two hands. Um, if he created it, he can also give brand new one. So receive brand new one. In the name of Jesus. Um, where's Pastor Heritage? Let me place your hand over our stomach. Let there be a reconstructive surgical work here by the Spirit. Um, when next I see you, we'll be laughing. Because the Lord has done a new thing. Thank you, Lord. I am particularly excited about that. Hey, where is Minister Tyrone? Come and raise me that sound. See what the Lord has done. And... Um, See what the Lord has done. Oh, thank you. Will you be seated too? Oh, see hey. what the Lord has oh, done. Thank you, Lord. What we've waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has. See what the Lord has. Can you see? 
what we waited for has come to pass. Is, is the bride ready? If you look at the theme of this program, on top you see that it's called Confluence of Grace. We're going to do something very, very apostolic. The thing is that because we don't have so much men, God is not doing hybrid graces. The ones that are yielded, He's giving them multiple offices. It's not only enough to be available. You have to be usable. Standing in this place is a prophet, an apostle, a teacher. Three in one. Standing here, a teacher, a pastor, an apostle. Standing here, an evangelist and an apostle. All the fivefold ministries are represented here. So whilst he was ministering, I saw something in the spirit. We're going to put off the light and you're going to turn on your light. He taught something yesterday and he called it light. You're going to lift up your flags. If you don't have the flag, you're going to lift up your hands. And the prophet of God will decree and declare. Let me tell you what will happen. It's too late because you're already implicated. Where's Lorraine? It is too late because you're already what? Implicated. So let's lift up the flag. And I will allow the prophet of God. Thank you, Lord. If you don't have a flag, lift up your hands as a point of contact to the nation. There's a sound in my spirit. I will just sing that song and allow him. Let's go dance. Jesus. Put on your touch lights. One hand up. Put on your touch lights. All phones on. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let those carrying those flags come to the back of the stage right now quickly come quickly 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 for those carrying the flags come just climb don't worry climb climb the back climb the back go to the back climb the back quickly quickly just raise it up I told him it's a representation of an advancing army to the hands of the earth light everyone prophetically as this is 
in a very, very dark world. Yet through your life and through your hands, to the hands of the earth as nations are represented here, the grace for influence. Hey, just help them. Just help her, help her. To carry forth this that the Lord has placed upon your life to the ends of the earth. Receive it now. I heard in my spirit the light that cannot be put out. The light that cannot be quenched. The light that cannot be put out. In the name of Jesus. This becomes an voice of light to the ends of the earth. That which has landed upon you in this meeting. That which is sitting upon your life right now. You will not throw it away. You will not lose it. That in another two, three years, when we begin to see graces speaking in different places, it will be traced to the river that flowed tonight. Giants are imagined. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Lift your voice and sing it. On them is said, all on who are there, glory I give you. On them is said, on them is said, for Jesus, clap for Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory. This is the convocation of priests. This is the convocation of priests. Lord, we thank you. 
we thank you we bless your holy name do we have any new joiners in the house can you just give a wave if you could just rise to your feet so we can just thank you, so we can celebrate you and welcome you ushers if you can just see the our new brethren and if you can just give them a card we can take your details we would love to invite you into our house this is a kind of nation a nation of love and we welcome you I would now just like us to uh, put the offering on the screen, put the details for the giving. So when we sow seeds, we sow into fertile ground. Who's been blessed? So as we're sowing our seed, let's sow that seed with the expectation that we will, be re that we will receive what the Lord has done in the name of Jesus. And I also, who's, who's received a copy of the book? Who's been blessed by the book? Running on bended knees. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Has anyone been blessed with running on bended knees? It's the new book by our pastor. And you can get a copy at the back and your lives will never be the same again. Glory, 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 glory. So as I said, this is Shekinah Nation. We gather here every Sunday at two o'clock and we have our service tomorrow. We'll love to welcome you. For those that are new, we will we'll invite you here tomorrow, 2 o'clock. Come and be blessed. Who's been blessed? I can't hear you. Who's been blessed? Glory, glory, glory. Now, I'd just like if we can all rise and so we can say the grace and let's end the conference for today. If you can just hold hands with the person next to you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Can I hear that? Hallelujah!